So in the church year, we are in the season of Epiphany now. And the season of Epiphany has to do with the, as is there in the word, the shining forth or the making manifest of who Christ is. Our scripture passages today are about how God calls his people to be a part of this manifestation, to not just see the shining forth of who Christ is, but to become the body of Christ, to be a part of an ongoing, ongoing showing forth of Christ in the world. This is about how we not only celebrate the epiphany, but we participate in it, that we continue this epiphany. Last week, we remembered and celebrated the baptism of Christ. But today, our epistle begins, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Paul reminds us that we are baptized into Christ. Now, the first thing we should notice here is that it is God that takes the initiative. It's not in the first place something that we do, but God does. God has come to us. God has adopted us. We then follow and strive to be true and to be faithful to what he has done. Now, in both our gospel passage and in our Old Testament reading today, we have stories of callings, of uh, of God and of Jesus, of calling humans to be a part of this epiphany. Specifically, it's the calling of some special figures, of apostles and prophets. And John, Nathaniel, is being called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And in 1 Samuel, we have Samuel being called to be a prophet. So in our Old Testament passage, as I mentioned, we have the story of Samuel being called to be a prophet. And the parallel here in the New Testament is of the apostles. The apostles and the prophets are special places, special people in relation to God. Those to whom the word of, the, of, the word of God has been revealed, who then pass it on to others. A prophet specifically is someone who says, thus says the Lord. In our gospel reading, we have the calling of Nathaniel and Philip. Just before this passage, we have the calling of Simon Peter and Andrew to be apostles. And these are those who have been called to witness the incarnate and resurrected Jesus, to represent Jesus in a special way. So both the prophets and the apostles provide a central link between us and God. Just as Jesus in our gospel passage is presented as a connection between heaven and earth, so are the apostles and prophets who set forth and present things in scripture to us, provide a link between us and Jesus and God. So it's through these special figures, the prophets in the Old Testament and the apostles in the New, that we, the church, are connected to Christ and called into his body. For God works not apart from us, but in and through us. This is um, mysterious to us and frustrating often, that God doesn't just kind of work on us like it's magic, but works through us, works through humans, through vessels of clay, as uh, Paul talks about us sometimes, fragile things 
fragile earth, earthen jars that bear the treasure of the kingdom. It's like God fixes us who are broken tools by using us while we are still broken. Now we as the church are called and we are connected to Christ through the apostles and the prophets through scripture. And we are also connected to Christ through the sacraments, centrally the Eucharist. So that we are all connected together. We become members of Christ. We become the body of Christ. Paul tells us in our epistle, we are not our own but we are members, body parts of Christ. And therefore, we should glorify God in our bodies. Now, the world sees Christ today through the church. Christ is the connection between heaven and earth, the ladder between heaven and earth. That's what is being referred to in our gospel passage kind of mysteriously. Jesus is referring to himself with the imagery of Jacob's ladder. That as angels were going up and down the ladder that Jacob saw in his dream, that Jesus said, you will see angels ascending and descending upon me as if he is the ladder between heaven and earth. So we, as the church are a connection, another connection, a way between God and the world. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ in the world. All these ways of talking about our connection to God through the, through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we, our physical bodies, are members of Christ, so we are, Paul says, to live as if that's the case. We should actively live out the reality of who we are to glorify God in our bodies. And we, when we are doing this, we are not just living as isolated bits, as isolated atoms, as separated body parts. That's pretty gross to think about it. We don't just follow our desires, do whatever we want or think in terms of what we can get away with or what's permissible. Body parts that do this, those of you who are in medicine, who start doing their own thing, we've got a word for that. It's cancer or maybe parasites. A part that lives at the expense of the body is not as much a part of the body as it is a problem, a sickness. And Paul, uncomfortably for us, says this is exactly what we are becoming when we fornicate. When we say, it's my body, I'll do whatever I want with it. And I'll follow my desires. My desires are what's important. My desires define my identity. This goes directly in opposition to who we are to be as Christians. That we focus on what we think is pleasurable in the moment of what we are as individuals and not the kind of person that we are to become and not we, who we are in relation to Christ and the church. Instead, instead of this, however, Instead of doing what we please or doing what we desire, we should be mindful of this connection, that we are connected together as a body, as a temple, as a church, that we are the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit. As Christ has connected heaven and earth, so we are connected to him through the apostles and prophets. And we are joined together in communion with God. When we do this, we are being true to our identity, our new identity in baptism. Paul says, you were bought with a price. You are not your own. 
When we are being true to our baptized identity, we glorify God the Father in our bodies. We are members of the body of Christ. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And this is how we live as the presence, the shining forth, the epiphany of God in the world. Amen.